Great. Intro complete. Well, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. As you can see, we're still working on the short track truck. It's time for digicals. We got to get into the electrotricities that make the the light the fire to the light the light the fires. We need the light side of it. I can make fire happen. Is what I'm saying. There's a lot. There's a lot into planning and just trying to lay this out correctly. We've got a Holly Terminator X. That's the brains of the unit, but we also have a relay bank because we're going to be putting some switches in and stuff like that to control things like the fan and the ECU and the ignition. And then we've got some solid state relays that got to go in. We've also have a battery charger brain box thing that's got to go in. We got to mount it all and start. It's going to be a lot, but where we're going to start, I think, is just making some mounting places in here to put all the stuff in. So I'm thinking of putting the brains in right here. I gotta make a plate first and then we'll kind of take off from there. But first I got a PSA, we gotta talk about this. For the group of you that are saying, get back to revivals. Look, I, I can't, it's hard for me to even keep saying it at this point. Revivals didn't go anywhere. They never are going to go anywhere. There are always going to be revivals on this channel. I'm still doing revivals. I'm still going to continue to do revivals. You can find revivals here at Vice Grip Garage. On Vice Grip Garage, what I'm known for is doing revivals. So we're going to do revivals here on the Revival Channel. That being said, there's only so many times a guy can pour gas down an engine. You know, before I, we, I like a challenge. Let's have some fun. Do it. We're going to have a one-of-a-kind truck when this is done, and then we could do a revival on here at Vice Grip Garage because we do revivals. But keep in mind, this channel started by building things in my garage. We started doing engine swaps and straight six to V8 swaps and building hot rods and doing racing and builds in my garage. Then I started doing some revivals. But don't worry. We're going to do revivals. Here at Vice Grip Garage, that's what we do. So they're coming, but let's build a truck. Then we'll do the revival. So I need a plate in here, because I think I'm gonna be putting all the relays and the doodads and the boxes and all that stuff in here, because my thought is, when I kind of started planning this, scary, I know, but I did. If a guy were to pop the side off, boop, he'd have everything here, fuel pump, all the digitals, all that stuff. So we're not clamoring and climbing around and things like that. And it just makes sense to have everything centrally located, put all the weight on this side of the vehicle. And I kind of explained this in part one and two. So let's measure this up. And that's quick, get to work, putting a plate in here because we can't get nothing done without some sort of back fixture. And I want it to be module, something that we can put in and out for serviceability, if we want to take the whole plate off, take all of our electronics with us, we can. I think I just made another plan. What is happening? I don't know, probably the tacos. So it's worth mentioning, you know, we're gonna have the electro digitals here, but I am gonna separate the Holly Terminator X, which is the brains of the whole rig, and I think I'm gonna put that in here. It just so bees it, there's already a frame in there we could probably use for that. A couple reasons. It would be nice to have it all right here, but there's gonna be a lot of shrapnel and stuff flying from that and potentially getting in here. We've got three bars to protect us. I'm probably also gonna put a plate in here. If we have time, we might also try to make some sort of get to sort of wheel, pan, tub thing back there. Don't know, don't know if we'll have time, okay? Great. The other reason is if we put it up here, we're not going to have to extend any of the harnesses, which is not recommended by Holly. And it's also a tremendous amount of time and effort. So if we put it here, all of the factory harnesses and the generic universals kit, which is what I got, 
should reach the injectors and the ignition and all of the sensors and everything like that. The other thing is we're going to be running a dash. I hope to get one of them big screen Holly Pro Hawk 9000s. We'll see. Otherwise, we'll just, you know, take the one out of Independence. So we're going to have that up there. That's going to need a CAN bus. We've also got the battery switches. We've got our main switchboard, and we've got our LCD for our battery charging system that's got to go in here somewhere. Most of those have some sort of communication leash, leash, leash wire. There's a cable, like a phone cord, or like CAT6F or something, that's going to plug into boxes. So we got to be careful on where we put stuff here. I put a little bit of thought into this actually. So basically we'll have relays all in here, charging system, main battery connects, ground connects, things like that. Two batteries down there, of course. Frame grounding is going to go there. Engine grounding will happen up here. Terminator X will go here. Connectors, things, hooking things in, clicky, 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 clicky. Battery disconnect starter. Okay? Got it. So this is the area here we're going to cut out that plate that we're going to use. And then we can hold it in place and start lining up all of our fixtures and devices. Then we can start punctuating holes and fastening all those down. Then we can figure out how to get into the truck. But I want to do some scribing. I have a special tip on here. This is like a super diamond carbide titanium moon rock thing and it will scribe letters and such into the metal here's an example this is the plate i already did we're going to do another big one i'm going to show you how we do that basically i'm going to sand this down quick fog it with some 98 cent paint we're going to let that dry then we're going to go to town scribing then we're going to go ahead and cut out the shape then we'll get to work putting it on the truck Sure, we're not going for perfect, okay? Actually, we are. What I mean by that is this is going to be okay, not even good, which is perfect because we don't want anything on this truck to be meticulous and precise because it would just look goofy against the rest of the truck. So I just quick fog this down. and It'll have bubbles and runs and whatever. Let this dry while that's drying. We'll get over here and design up our sheet. So Bradley has been working on a project too. You just finished another custom rocket. Mm -hmm. What do you got here? The three-stage rocket. All right, tell us about it. It has two C60 booster stages and the V64. How many, so the engines are in here already? Mm-hmm. Yes. How many feet is this gonna go? What's the planned destination? Around 2,000, 3,000 feet. Holy smokes. Is this one gonna have a camera? In an, uh, altitude meter or whatever you call it? I have a camera, but I don't have an altimeter that works. Oh, okay. And you made a nose cone and everything. Does that have a parachute? It doesn't have a parachute. It has a has a streamer in it. It uses the same drag effect, but it won't be blown away in the wind. So this has the same drag effect as a parachute? Yep. Wow. Not as much, but still slows it down. Nice. Good job, buddy. Yep. Looks great. Well, we've got that plate done. Turned out pretty neat, just a little bit of, you know, flare. No one's gonna see it but us, we know it's there. And I gotta paint it anyway. I gotta spray the backside yet, but I'm gonna use it to mock up where it's gonna be going in here. I also quick cut these out on the table, just some mounting tabs. What a guy's thinking is, probably be more like that. One here, maybe one down here, and then there and there so there'll be four main bolts that hold this thing in and i guess i got to be a little bit careful on this side where i put those because those bolts are obviously going to protrude on this side that's going to mess up where i can mount things so let me think about this for a second and then we'll come back and clean the bar up Zzzz. You know, lava staff these in really quick. Then we can start drilling holes and get the plate up here and get to work. 
I am positive there's an easier way to do this, but here's what a guy is doing. I just put a plate up here, a smaller one, so I can work with it a little bit easier. And that way a guy can just drop his tabs in, boop, and I'll weld them from the backside. So when I pull this plate off, the tab is gonna be perfectly flush with the big plate once we put it on. And I decided to put these two tabs way over yonder near the edge of the plate. That'll give us the most real s tapey over here for the stuff and the things to come. We might end up with just one on this side. It's getting a little tighter than we started with. Can't see nothing. Ah, oh, fire everywhere. I, I don't know what's happening. Okay, we ended up with three tabs. And I think that's going to be plenty, and obviously they're very, very strong. So we're going to let this cool down, scratch them up, and then, you know, i got to powder coat it again. And then we'll put that plate on and start drilling some holes for that. Powder coating. Wow, this happens to match perfectly. You know, years of powder coating. Guy can eyeball this stuff now and just bring out the perfect color. Yeah, that ought to work. Uh oh, gap's going bad. <laughs> Guy's gonna pop some rib nuts in here. I thought about welding a nut to the backside, but this is just easier, faster. And probably what I'm going to use to hold all of the different components to the actual board here. Now that I think about it. One more and then we can line up the new panel. Still works pretty good for being jungle website. Just gonna loosely put this in here for now because we gotta lay everything out. Just wanna make sure everything lines up. Looks like it does. Good enough for the girls we date. <laughs> well, that looks pretty slick. And like I say, now we can just always easily pop this whole panel off if we want to get access behind or take all electronics out or whatever. Figure a lot of the wiring will come down here, run along the frame, and then we'll start bringing it up through here. Fuel might come under and then come up across here, something like that. We'll have to wait and see. Now I'm gonna go find a piece of cardboard the same size as this, and we'll start laying out electro digitals, figure out what we gotta do to get them onto here. Well, the guy went ahead and put a plate up here as well. That seems to be doing pretty good. I might try to put a couple more bolts in that. We'll see. Same exact process as this, basically. And that, again, is where the Terminator X is going to go. I might just knock that up first to get that hung. And then we'll... I'm still thinking on this over here as far as what we're going to do. Okay, I just need two on the bottom. And this will look pretty slick. After working with that nice big dominator on the Monty, this looks so just a little guy. But it does everything you need it to do for a lot of these. I think this has four inputs, outputs. It's plenty for what we're doing. Anywho, I couldn't get my paint marker or pen or anything down through the case. So what I did was just paint it up the end of a bolt and then just drop that down through there. And voila. Whoa, almost lost the beep boot machine. So there's my four holes right there. I got to pop in really quick. Looks a little crooked. Perfect. Got the Terminator mounted on the panel here. I'll go ahead and throw it up. 
left it low enough to where we could still see the status lights if need be, but high enough to where the cable line coming out of it's gonna have a little bit of support. That is just flapping in the wind, you know. I think this is a good spot for the computer. Far enough away from heat and debris. Still easy enough to get to. Charlotte's heart is officially in. All right, let's figure out this panel. I found a piece of cardboard that's messing around with it. Well, I've been playing around with this for a long time and this seems to be the best setup. Keeping in mind the direction of all the cabling and wires and there'll be more wire hanging in the main street and yeah, it's just gonna be a mess is what I'm saying. This bobber here, I don't know, the ARC Model 8000. Sounds like I named it. A fan actually sent me this for independence a while back. I apologize, sir, I forgot your name, but you know who you are, thank you so much. Again, we're trying to build this, you know, with stuff laying around if we can and parts and pieces that we have, keep expense down and boom, here we go. So all of these relays are gonna to correspond to this switch panel. And this has a ribbon cable that comes out of it, plugs into here. So for example, when I, this is a momentary switch, the first one, that's going to be the starter. So then this guy is going to be a starter and we run a wire from there to our starter, so on and so forth. Now there's a couple things that I'm not going to trust this with because you got, you know, the mechanical switched type relay and then you've got a solid state relay from MSD. These are much more tougher, I guess you could say, in a sense. So fuel pump is going to be run off of here. I'm also uncertain what I'm going to do with fans. I've got a switch on here just in case, but the fan might have its own controller because I might try something different there as well. It could end up in here. It could end up in here. I'm not sure. But for now, through this, we'll be running ignition kill, the 12-volt switch, basically all the low-load stuff. So 12-volt switch to the Holly, the water pump we could probably run on there. I think that's 9 amps. These are set for 30. Uh, nice thing about this too is it's 12 volt or 16 volt, so that'll work for us. This is going to have one lead coming into it from the both batteries because that's got to go to a kill switch. And then we can have power takeoff for this guy here. We're going to have our Holly and all that stuff coming into here from the bottom. This is going to have one cable coming off of the frame. And that'll plug into here, and then the frame will also be bonded to the engine, and then both batteries are going to be bonded to the frame. So it's going to be a big net, basically. And then same thing, all the grounds are going to swing to this. This is going to have two red leads coming off of it, one to each battery post. It's going to charge each battery independently, and then the ground will just swing it right into this. This will need a ground, and then we'll be doing 12-volt switch. Well, we could do either 12-volt switch or ground switch on this but we'll have a red coming up into this and then we'll have fuel pump and it's a four channel so whatever else we decide but this I think is how we're going to take and do that so I'm going to take this back off line everything back up again and then I just need to decide if we're just going to do uh, hardware like this nut and bolt with washers or if we're going to take the time to jam a bunch of nut certs into it. Nut certs are neat, they're fast and easy, they look nice, but they do tend to vibrate and start spinning loose and stuff. So I, I don't know yet. This relay board is in, just popping the holes for the other relays and the, I don't know, bus bars? What are we gonna call them? I don't know. Things that do electric stuff. Well, I kind of made a switch up here with the nut certs. I uh, moved to M5 because that's what the hardware is for this. And definitely not because I snapped that off completely and ruined the tool. So we've got all those in here now. Should be able just to bolt them down. Board is back up and the first official wire terminated on Charlotte. It's still loose in there, but I think that's gonna look 
pretty nice and man is it going to be nice wiring this thing i ain't got to lean over no hood i could do it right here in my teeth get everything done so i think next we're going to go ahead and throw the batteries in let's get those terminated and start running the wires up to our battery switch we can run another wire to the starter we can run another wire back to the power takeoff over here not pto on a tractor this red lego thing and then our battery system should be complete let's just start with the basics we'll go there and then we can move on to the rest of the garbly gook now while a guy continues to wire and stuff like that up here i've got some huge help coming in today thankfully for all the bars and we're going to try to reconstruct the front end and also get some support in the rear maybe if we have time brandon and peyton from rogue fabrication that's that pipe bending machine that I've used multiple times. You guys watch me use that, make roll cages and stuff like that. They work with those guys. I called Joe, the owner, and I was like, hey, I want to get some more dyes from you, some other supplies and things like that. And we got the chit chat and was like, you know what? Do you want to come down and do some work on it? He couldn't sneak away, but Brandon and Peyton are coming down. And that's going to be great to watch these guys work. We're also going to upgrade the machine, I believe, a little bit. So that'll be nice and see if we can get some sort of structure. And that means, yes, I did find some body panels for this, albeit they are in terrible condition, but maybe we can make this thing actually look like a truck. Let me get all that unloaded. Pristine hardware here. You know, the front, that's not even banged up. And the fenders, them are fine, you know. And the windshield's not even broken into pieces. So that's pretty cool. We got a back thing and the roof uh, this is sure and then i believe these are all the panels to make the back you know a back so that's pretty neat i was definitely missing this piece so i think we've got all the a pillars and i think i got the cab corners in the truck so we can at least make a roof pretty easy but hanging this stuff off the front is going to be a challenge there used to be quite a few bars around front here that was all that support and we got to figure out a rad and stuff like that i got a picture here of what it should kind of ish look except not bent to pieces so this is one of the pictures i was sent when i bought it i guess what it was supposed to be and we can kind of see there was supports well there was one here and one up here i don't know where that one Huh, interesting. But anyway, this is where the front fenders lay up. And this is where that nose cone sits. And you can see this big bar down here. That's kind of that bottom valence. And then there's kind of the primary bumper. That one was bent in, this was bent in. But at least it's a reference as to what this is kind of supposed to be shaped like. So I think we're gonna try to follow that. It's gonna be really difficult. I guess I'm not really even sure what the process is if we kind of just tack up some fenders here temporarily just so we can get an idea of what's going on i don't know look at this unit we're putting in it's an electric hydraulic right yep and uh, that's going to mount underneath yep and we the get... power unit mounts underneath here hoses come up here runs the hydraulic ram that's nice this works fantastic obviously but i guess this one's just a little bit quieter a little bit faster so we're going to get that upgrade done and then start bending some stuff, I guess. So obviously throughout this project, guys, pension, pen, pension on the pennies where you can, you know, reusing parts and stuff and junk and whatever. But where we really need it, we're going to go ahead and make that investment so we just don't have issues down the road. And one of those is going to be, I went ahead and stepped up to this big 1-0 cable. We're going to be using this for negatives you know the sad cable and the happy positive cables and as an example here's a standard four gauge that we use on all of our projects and you put that next to this what a difference i just had so many issues with you know wires getting hot and melty and licoricey and blowing fuses and relays we kind of already talked about this so i'm hoping some big old nasty negatives each battery is going to come up to here, then we're going to take this to the frame, then we're going to take the frame to the engine, 
and then we'll go ahead and start running those positive cables up to the switch starter and then one's going to come back over to here as well but these are some big old guys it'll be a little bit more difficult running them than i thought so to get the ground frame here guy just zeused on a nut i drilled a hole in the frame then zeus that on and then this is going to come right over there got to swing in the town at some point get some more shrink wrap for this but that should work just fine there and then like i say we'll do one off the engine to the frame but i think this is going to do it for now for the main grounding anyway we still got to run ground here fuel pumps got to be grounded the fans these there's a lot that's going to be going on this lug over here um, it's going to be the same for the positive side i think we'll have obviously the two batteries and we'll have one open for all of the different accessories first time ever sitting in the rig i got the seat and all the junk out here so i can fit working on the battery switch next got to get this in so we can run our positive cables and i'm thinking right here where the old tack went but we got to make this provision bigger i did some cad work you know cardboard aided development and that's kind of what the hole needs to be and then also on the bottom we need to have a little bit more room so the cables can swing down and through but i think right here i can be able to reach it and turn my batteries on so i'm gonna see potentially if i could just get some tin snips in here and make this hole the way that i need it before getting out grinders and all that other stuff. Sure, seems to be working, I guess. It's gonna take me a while, but I'll get it. Switch is in. Now we have a place to land the cables behind this on the firewall area. I used some nut certs and some M5 hardware, and uh, it seems to be working really good on this tin stuff there's a provision here give it a, just a little bit more room to sweep out i might have to file this or get a little bit of rubber on there just to protect it a little bit but i plan on bending those fittings anyway and have those cables kind of coming out at a 45 anyway because we got to come around like this and over works pretty slick so brandon's got the upgrade done all this stuff here so we went from that jack handle to this. That's a lot easier, a lot faster. So we're gonna start on the front of the truck here. And I think we're gonna use the same technologies they were doing here, which was, it was kind of a slip joint or slip fitting, or I don't know. This has been hit and cranked and bent, which is why they cut it. So I think we're gonna hack this off put a new stub on here and then we're going to build it the same way where the front will essentially slide in so when I run it into a wall at 50 we can just rebuild it and slide in a new one hopefully that's the idea anyway and one of the main goals here is to try to figure out how to get a rad to sit in here and he could take weld which is great so we'll probably make some steel brackets and then weld on some aluminium brackets to the rad that'll hold that into place so as soon as I get done with a couple wires over here, I'm gonna go pull the rad fans, expansion tank, all that stuff out of the Chevelle and bring that over here and start fitting that in. And it should fit pretty well because this is a G body frame, essentially the same thing as an A body frame, just, you know, late model. And we'll start figuring that out as well. So the truck definitely had an impact this direction, probably a wall, I would guess. And it bent this front stub over and bent this one as well and kind of concaved this. So he just snipped both off and then we'll just try to true her up with the new standouts here. The challenge we're having right now is all the panels were laid flat. So fiberglass will flex and then just stay whatever position there. And so this fender was flat. This hood is concave the wrong direction. So trying to get everything to line up to 
even make. That's pretty close to right there. Yeah, if you kick that bottom in, we'll have a good idea. Yeah. Right about there. I think that's what she's supposed to look like right there. Yeah. <laughs> it just automatically blows apart. <laughs> This is all pop riveted in now so we can kind of get an idea of where the hood went. We're just kind of slowly piecing it together. We got to get reference points to build the fender. You want to do the fenders first, right? Yeah, I want to get the fenders kind of put in place so we can figure out where the bumper needs to lie. And then we'll build off of these and make the front bumper. Nice. It's coming together. It's just one big jigsaw puzzle. This first one's going to be 10 degrees. So. Degree over for spring back. Right off, so loose, and then you can check it. So these are the three bands we're going to do on this one here. He drew it out on the floor and kind of figured out it's basically 75 degrees from center over in total. So the guys got the main starter wire in and the starter relay, and I put that in this DEI sleeve. I've had really good luck with this stuff. Got her clamped up with some big old zip ties. And that's going to run up through here, and then we just got to get this, you know, tied up there. This is hanging loose right now by a roll. That's going to go over to the relay bank on that side. Uh, that's going to pretty much do it for here. Other than I've got transmission cooler lines that I need to snake through here, probably through here at some point. Not quite there yet, though. Well, the truck is starting to look like a truck. And it's a cat eye. They got the uh, lower bar in here. Look at that. Really slick. Just tacked in for now in case we need to make adjustments. But fender is on the cab. Fender is meeting the front. Making progress here. Now we just need, I guess, duplicate or mirror both sides. And we got to get something up here. But I think the hard part, that's probably the hardest part, right? It's just getting the front. Yeah, that bumper was a little tricky, especially because this thing was so mangled. Yeah. All this is basically pancaked, so we're kind of just <laughs> winging it as far as what they're supposed to be shaped like. But it's looking great. It's looking good, guys. Well, the guy's got, I guess, when I'm calling all the primary wiring done, it's not all beautified yet, but we've got two in, two out. And the reason there's two out is there's one directly to the starter down there. And then there's one that's now feeding back over to here. And once we clean all this up, you know, it's gonna be tucked in here and whatever. And then this is the starter relay, number one here. And then they actually label that on the board, number one down here. So now we can start running some accessorize and things like that. Gotta get the battery charger up in here. Those are the other lines that need to go to the positive and negative on each battery. And then I can bolt those down tight and snug. And those can basically be done. So we're starting to make progress. It's incredible how long this takes when you make custom length cables and put all the heat shrink and everything on it. It's, it's tedious. It just takes a little while to get it done. But we're making progress. This is looking great up here. Things are happening. It's gonna be nice. Look how much room we got in here for a rad. Especially if we tilted it back a little bit. It's gonna be interesting to see how that sits. By now you fellers know the theme, reusing parts. So we're gonna take this rad and hopefully fit it into that truck. I'm gonna take some measurements first before we tear this all to pieces. A um, Couple reasons. One, I know it works. We haven't had an overheating issue. The only time we ever got hot is when this wiring and relays went cuckoo on us. And we've also got this expansion tank for additional water flow. And all of that's already taped in and set up. So basically want to mirror this same system over on the other big block. So let's get a tape measure out. I got to learn how to use one of those. This should be empty already. 
and see if we can fit it in that truck. The challenge is going to be keep an eye out on that gearbox there. See that? And then there's quite a bit of room from there up here. Well, look at this. On this rig, we've got... So remember on that Chevelle, this would come over and there's a body mount. And that rad sits right about here on that. Well, that's not going to work in this setup because this is the top lip of the uh, front over there. So if this is the top, you know, if we put it here, it's going to hit that box. So we're going to have to probably angle this or do something a little wild. Uh, the original rad would have looked something like this one. This is out of a 2000 NASCAR. And you can see it's narrower and thicker. This could also maybe be an option, but I'd lose my electric fans and I'd also lose my additional water inlet. But it's here just in case that's something we've got to do. I'm also taking a look at these mounts here. We might try to mimic something like that. So Brandon's going to reconfigure this because we're thinking in the long run it's going to be easier to keep that other rad because it's all custom made and set up and everything like that. It's going to be easier to move this because he's just got it tacked in thankfully. But basically we're going to move these support bars, the bottom ones, out as far as we can. These have to go away and he's going to support it and brace it off this front one. This is the impact bumper. This is to hold the bumper and make it look pretty. And this is the same thing there. So he's going to do a little bit of reconfiguring. While he's doing that, I'm going to be over on Independence tearing all that stuff out. Then we can test fit it for real. And I think we could finish up this whole front today probably, huh? Yep. Sweet. Sweet. Awesome. Well, I got everything disconnected on the radiator here except a couple of digital wires. Snip. Okay, never mind. Those are disconnected now. So this should pull right out of here, yeah? There we go. Look at this big boy. These are now spall fans, I believe. And uh, this is that extra port that's taped on here. That goes to the expansion tank. So now I'll walk this over to the truck and have this over there so Brandon and I can figure out how to fit this thing in there. We also have to figure out how to mount this. Aluminium and steel don't zzz, zzz. Gonna have to do some sort of custom bracket try. So now that the guy's got this all opened up, we went ahead and just test fit the rad in here and we got plenty of room. The problem we're gonna have now is height. If you look at this, we have to run this puppy with no hood. I mean, it's gonna be awfully close with the breathers and by the time we get you know all in you know probably no hood is what I'm guessing but we'll see that's just fever glass that's going to be laid back you know what I mean and then hoses are going to be a nightmare we might have to do some splicing or get creative there but the great thing is remember no accessorize so there's not going to be a bunch of garbly gook in here other than the old double P moving water, and that's it. And then we gotta figure out, I guess, too, where to mount the electric power steering pump, which is significantly bigger than I had hoped. That might end up way out here somehow. Gonna have to make a bracket for that. But it's coming along. This is the jig he just quick threw up so we don't lose all the shape and structure he built into the front bumper. Pretty smart idea, now he's just making a bunch of new standoffs and things to hold all this together. You look like you're in timeout. <laughs> I feel like I'm in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> Repairing the little side kicker bar here. This one's slightly different. It's got a kick out that'll kind of give it some shape on this side. And it's a lot narrower than the other side. Brandon's over here doing math and geometry and other smart words that mean <laughs> numbers and stuff. He's done with the front here as far as all the bending and shape and everything like that. I'm going to come through and finish weld all of this back together. And while I'm doing that, what he's actually doing right now over there on his calculator is figuring out the rear. 
And this is probably the most important part as we're doing cookies and burnout competitions and all that stuff. The front generally is sitting still. Every now and then we might nose up against the wall. This is gonna be plenty more durable for that. Uh, but in the rear, we're gonna to have to have some tubing or something here for impacts. When this is swinging around, there's a lot of inertia. It's moving pretty quickly. And as you can see, there's just, well, there's nothing in here, literally. It's just an empty pocket. So I kind of just threw out an idea and he's gonna bring it to life of just having a bumper sticking out like this. One piece that goes all the way around and it's gonna tie into the frame up here and two times in the rear, one on the other side, and then we're gonna have a step down or a second piece of tube come around and that's gonna be supported as well. So we have something when I swing this around and I say when, not if, but when I swing this around and hit a barrier, that's gonna absorb the impact and we can save these bodies. This one is already in just absolutely terrible condition. It's not gonna last much longer, but if I have to replace panels every single time, that's no good on the, you know, the old bill fold. So he's gonna start working on the rear as far as design and bending. I'm gonna come up here, finish weld this off, and then I'm gonna keep working on the engine. I've got the water pump in. Once I get this welded and pulled out of the way, all this is gonna be gone so I can step right in here, get the intake put on, probably drop the lightning whirler in, get that set because I've got it at top dead center right now. And then we can start laying out our harness for the ignition clip, the injectors, all that stuff. So a guy whipped up this bracket and turbo cad. We're making a bunch of these. These are gonna be the brackets that mount together for the rear bumper. So if we have to remove the rear bumper to replace the body panel or something like that, we could do that without cutting it off of the frame every single time. Well, the guy's gonna go ahead and get the intake put on here. Just kind of test fitting the gaskets, make sure these fit nice and they fit really nice. And reason being, these are AFR gaskets, obviously for AFR heads. Again, this is the first time I've ever had name brand heads in my life, ever, even if there was a fire. So I wanted to make sure I used the right gasket. And of course, this is what they recommended. Well, here's why. I mean, this is completely flawless. And I'm sure they just use the face template from their machining for their gasket, right? So this just makes sense. Now, these are sliding a little bit. You can see this here. If you don't have the fancy gasket cinch or whatever, you can use window silicon or cock. You can use just any room temperature vulcanization cream, anything back here, and just smear it on, slap it on your head, put a bolt in the front, bolt in the rear, just so it sits where it needs to be, and let it tack up so it sits. And I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna come back and run a quarter inch of RTV on the top and front here, or the front back, excuse me, and then we'll drop that intake on here, get this all bolted in and ready to drop the lightning whirler in. Some of you might be wondering, why an intake change? couple reasons old new huge massive height difference also look inside see these plenums they're really large exaggerated look at this one here 
big difference there also on end. This is more of the oval or peanut port style. This is the rectangle style we need to match the AFR heads. So just an intake swap alone, we're gonna see not only big gains, better performance, still have the multi-port fuel injection. Both of these are Holly, just different styles, different years, uh, but we'll be able to keep the height of our installation lower. I think we're still gonna end up popping through the hood, which is, you know, that's okay. I don't mind but it's not gonna be so exaggerated. You know, we just, if I can, actually I'll show you here. So you can see here there was an old air cleaner hole. So if a guy needs to just cut these rivets off and knock that hole back out, I'm okay with that. I don't mind at all. It's just so the air cleaner sticks through and we don't have intake or throttle body issues. And you can see here, we're like right right on the line. Very, very, very close. But I think if we're just gonna, just gonna skip by. Just kind of set them in here, letting them cook right now. Got some Art Viz drying up. Let those sit for a second. Get this done here in a minute. Plop this on, just coming back with a clean rag right now. Just making sure we got all the debris and everything out of here we can. I might also just shoot a little bit of comp cams lubrication spray on the lifters here before we seal this up, kind of a last chance. I was also eyeballing, we ain't got Earl's. I might go on ahead and do that right now, actually, now that I think about it, because we can soak down this camshaft as we're dumping in the oil. Yeah, it's a nice time to clean and lubricate. Last chance. Golly. That's a bead right there. Gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes so it gets a little bit more tacky and firm. Then we'll plop that gasket on, work it back and forth, make sure it's nice and seated. Then we'll run some bolts through it. Well, the truck doesn't have a roof. So let's, uh, let's put an intake on, you know? All right. Easy. But faster, but easier. But but slower, but easy, but faster. Right there. And then once I get it seated, I like to give it a little, just gentle back and forth. Make sure that room temperature vulcanization cream sets in, all the air bubbles pop. That looks pretty good right there. Then I'm gonna run my four corner bolts back in again make sure this doesn't settle wonky at all then i can break the wrist walk away come back a little bit later we'll run in some different hardware and torqueize it by torqueize it i mean i'm going to tighten it till i get dizzy and or my chin pops and then we're done i wanted to show you guys this quarter inch bead that's what it ends up squished an absolute perfect amount. Nice and flat, it's not overkill, everything's gonna be nice and sealed. And it's way better than that rubber gaskets that they always send in these kits. And I'm gonna tell you guys out of experience, 13 times out of eight, what ends up happening is that rubber gasket gets squished out, normally in the rear, and oil just starts pouring out of the back. And you're gonna think it's a rear main seal or something else it's a big pain in the rump don't use the rubber gaskets that come in your gasket kits ever even if there's a fire don't do it go down spend the six bucks get some rtv and run that bead on the front and the rear of the block you're going to thank me later it's not going to leak it's going to be much much better take those rubber thingies and just throw them away or use them as shims or Fix a door hinge, or I don't, I don't know. Use it for something else. System's coming together. So there's the standout. There's going to be a plate here. I'll go show you on the other side. 
sandwiching this so we can take this bar off after I bend it here in a few days and uh, either remake the bar or replace the panel. See? This one goes on the outside. Done deal. Nice and easy. While the intake's drying over there, I started messing with the power steering. This is a Volvo electric power steering pump. And this is what I'm gonna try to use or retrofit to the truck. It's got a bunch of electric stuff here, but basically electric motor, hydraulic fluid, pump, high pressure line, return line here. And I made a bracket just now on the table. And this should line up hopefully. Yeah, there we go. So this is gonna be our bracket that we could put on the truck. That's gonna mount this to the front bumper frame. It's like gonna hack in this, this and this off. Don't really need that stuff, you know. Yes, yes, you know, that stuff. Two big three eighths bolts, how to hold this pretty good. And then I just gotta figure out what in the devil makes this run. Obviously that one needs juice, but we've got, you know, what does this do? How does that, I don't know if it's variable speed. I don't know if it's on off. I got to figure all that out yet. But the research I did, this is the most affordable, cheap way to just try to figure out electric power steering. And if this works, man, boy, I'm going to be putting it in a lot of stuff. So here's that bracket I made that's got some m8 hardware in it that took me a minute i was grabbing the 5 16ths well valve valves whatever them's made they ain't use the usd anyway don't think you need to have a table to make plates like this fellas you can easily do that with a cutoff wheel and a drill all right so i think if i weld that on just like that the weight is supported there obviously i weld that bracket on that i could cut all this other garbly gook off We'll run the hoses. I got a generic GM hose kit. That happened to fit that fitting. I don't know how or why. It just did. Okay. And then the electrotricities up here, I'll make this kind of like a male female plug. So if we ever have to pull this whole nose cone off, trying to make this serviceable, the pump just stays in the nose here it comes off with the whole unit after we just disconnect those two hoses, see? Well, that's the idea anyway. I did put the nose on here to measure. There's just enough room. I'm gonna have to use some sort of flexo light, bendy, tubey, uppy funnel to get juice into here. I also cranked the wheel, make sure we got plenty of room. I think that just, we might pull her off. Bracket is lightning staffed in, test fit it. It's looking good, should be plenty sturdy. And again, it's modular because if we pull the front off, all we have to do is just disconnect the lines and the whole pump comes out with it. So be nice when I blow this thing up, we can get the nose cone off really quick, get the next engine in. It's not all the way tight, but that kind of gives you an idea what that's gonna look like while it's held up here i thought this would just be easier than putting it in a vice let's go ahead and yeah, yeah you know snip and snag this bracketry off i really don't think we need this can't be eh, it might have a little bounce to it but we ain't going down the road you know what i mean boy that is pretty heavy hmm i wonder bracket nope back to just cutting it off <laughs> gonna go ahead and hit this with some powder coating get that all perfected because we don't want it to rust guys are working on the back bumper we need some sort of supports gussets i don't know what we're calling them down rod doohickey bobbers are going to come from here shoot down to this bar and that's also going to have a plate so again we could just unbolt this take it right off but it's gonna have a ton of support. We're just gonna be brushing this against the wall essentially. But we also need something in the rear for rear impact. And if we get time, there's gonna be a second row we're gonna to add to this as well. And then eventually I'm gonna get an X pattern 
underneath the main frame because it's gonna bend right there if we hit it up here or vice versa. So that's gotta be strengthened up as well, but we're making huge advancements here as far as not crunching the plastic or the fiberglass. So here are the flanges or the kick out pedestal poppy outies. And then he's got this whipped up. Look at that fit. That is wild. So that's gonna be great. It's gonna not only look, look great, but give us some support if I were to wing this around and back her into something, which is plausible. <laughs> so looking good. So we just gotta do that again over here. And then, I don't know. We'll see if we have time to do something else, but it's looking really good. We done made a mess last night. Brandon, Peyton, and I were out here super late. I think I finally crawled in the house around 2 a.m., give or take. They had an early flight. I feel bad for those guys. Big thank you for their help. They're catching a nap right now, headed back home. So let's go ahead and finish bolting on this intake, try to drop this dual sync distributor in, do a little bit more wiring, try to use up all the parts that we have in stock for the thing, see how much farther we can get. Well, I got updates on the Hemi Half giveaway, the moment you've all been waiting for. Thank you guys so much for being patient. I know it's taken a little bit, but listen, we're going through a legit giveaway company, so it takes a little bit of time. There's policies and procedures and legalities they have to follow to do this correctly. The winner has been chosen at random. They've been vetted and verified. The winner is Sean M. We're gonna give him a call right now and let him know that he won the Hemi Half giveaway. If I could find my telephone. There it is. I don't know if my phone is right, but it says Florida. Come on, feller. Come on. Come on now. Hey, is this Sean? This is Sean. This is a feller up at Vice Grip Garage. How are you? Oh, hi, Derek. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. You probably know why I'm calling. I was calling to congratulate you. I do. On I'm, winning I the Hemi Half. I'm Hemi Half waiting for me at the Freedom Factory. <laughs> you do. Congratulations, man. How's it feel? Boy, it feels great. Good. It feels really great. It's really... It's just such a cool build. Yeah, have you ever had good luck like this with giveaways or anything like that, or is this the first big thing you've won? Man, I don't, I don't think I've won a single thing in my whole entire life. And, <laughs> That's great. You know, not even like a free taco. Wow. You know, you know to win, win something like a truck is just unheard of. Well, hey, listen, you've got my number now, so let's stay in touch. We'll make arrangements. You can come down to the Freedom Factory. I'll meet you. You can pick up the truck. I'll run you through everything. And maybe I'll talk you into sure. even doing a burnout. Well, there you have it. Sean has won the Hemi half. He gets to come down to the Freedom Factory. I guess he lives in Florida, so he's close by. And uh, I'll try to film that as well and show you guys picking up the truck and everything like that. I'm super, super excited. This makes me so happy to give back to you guys. Thank you for everyone that entered. I know some of you are heartbroken. It's just the way that she goes sometimes. You know, the cookies are crumbling. And that's, you know, if you guys want to do another one, let me know. I don't know. You guys asked for years to do one. We finally did one. Maybe that's it. If you want to do another one, sure, maybe we'll come up with something cool. But you got to give me some ideas down there in the bleep boop box. If you do want to see another vehicle, what kind? You know what I mean? Anyway, let's get back to the short track truck here. We've got a tremendous amount of work to do. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. While you're there, let me tell you about a tip or trick. Well, tricks are for kids. That's what my friend says. That'd be a tip, I guess. 
I used to use Teflon tape and stuff like that for, you know, intake bolt. Remember, some of these intake bolts are going into water jackets and what have you. Some go into valleys, depending on your engine. You can have oil, coolants, stuff leaking. I ran into this stuff here on accident. Gas oil, gas oil, gas oil. Look, I don't know what it's called. This is what it looks like. And it resists gasoline, oils, kerosene, diesel fuels, steam, water, refrigerants, acids, solvents, gases, chemicals. Don't use with oxygen. Use in ethanol, use on ethanol blended fuels. So I started using this stuff because it's a lot easier to put on. It's like a, it's a paste basically. And uh, I could be sure to get this stuff sealed up really good. Haven't had any leaks yet. A lot of that Teflon tape is so darn cheap these days. Guy just can't get nothing good anymore. And uh, I started using, I think it was called Dolphin Tape or something like that. But it's so darn expensive. I've had this one bottle here forever. Getting this intake bolted down, get her torqualized. Then I think we can uh, start hunting for injectors. Maybe drop those in the intake just so I don't get any junk down into my intake here. And probably leave the tops capped. I don't have fuel rails yet for this. They're ordered, they just haven't shown up yet. And we can maybe also throw the harness up on the engine, make sure we got enough length. Now that I'm looking at it, a firewall is a pretty far distance back. A little bit more than I had remembered when we mounted the computer, so hopefully that's not an issue. I'm sure it will be, great. Kinda got the harness just temporarily thrown in here. May not stay like that. I'm probably going to end up running the fuel pressure regulator right there. It's kind of a neat spot. Tuck back in, then I can come straight in here for the fuel. I was going to run this across the back, but now I'm wondering if maybe I go up way in there and then over. Have to play with it a little bit and see what looks the best, I guess. Can bus is over here. All oh, this should be plug and play. The tippuses, the iacuses, the mappuses, the cutuses, stuff like that. Injector harness, ignition should plug right into the dual sink billet distributor. We'll get that set in there here pretty soon. But it's coming along, making some big progress. Got the distributor dropped in. I can't remember, a guy might have just iced right over this when we did it on independence just kind of wanted to show you this a little bit closer this is pretty cool setup here it's not an hei it's not like well not really like anything this is a dual sink so this lightning whirler is going to give us a crank and a cam signal while distributing lightning that way we can fire our multi-port fuel injection so you know, like an LS, you have a crank sensor and a cam sensor and everything. This engine obviously doesn't. This is going to do that for us. So following the directions here, it's kind of a little bit goofy. They're talking about 50 degrees before top dead center, but following this to a T, uh, we're going to get this set up. have to have power to finalize this here, but basically there's a process of, there's two little lights in here. You got to get those blank and doodab in and whatever and set those up. But that's essentially in for now. And this plug will go right into here and we're done. Except I am going to interrupt the 12 volt power because we're going to have a switch for that. That way, if we want to rotate the engine without ignition or fuel, we can. You know, checking compression, checking out valve train, stuff like that. We want to just be able to roll it over without flooding it or shooting lightning everywhere just in case we're troubleshooting or doing any sort of maintenance so now we're starting to get all the holes plugged up on this thing so hopefully nothing falls in the engine just been been a worry wart gonna be honest well i think we've pushed forward as far as we can with the parts that we currently have yeah i think that made sense right 
I'm waiting on a bunch of stuff. She'll be showing up any day from Holly. Got a bunch of stuff from Summit coming. But we're kind of stuck between a rock and four pickles and a goat, basically, at this point. But we'll have plenty more coming on this. I'm trying to get this together as quick as I can. Not quite sure if we're going to make Bradenton Burnout Competition, but we'll absolutely have an Indy and Bristol and all the other future events for sure. And don't worry, it's warming up. It's getting nice outside. I've got a big pile of classic cars ready for revivals. We've also got some other cool builds if you'd like the builds. This is nothing compared to some of the stuff coming up on the channel later this summer. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you very soon. I gotta clean this place up now. It's a mess. <laughs>